I'm Tom Lusher, Editor-in-Chief of the European Heart Journal, and I'm sitting here in Davos at the Cardiology Update uh, in Switzerland, and I'm talking to uh, uh, Professor Salim Yusuf. He's Professor of Medicine at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada, and he just gave a marvelous lecture on salt and its implications for cardiovascular health. Welcome, Salim. Thank you, Tom. Let's just start with uh, the question, why, why do, are we actually using salt? Uh, uh, the it, aborigines, they wouldn't use it, so why, why did it come into our, our culture? Why has it become so important for us uh, in nutrition? I think salt has historically been used uh, largely as a preservative in foods, mm -hmm. and then obviously people then acquire a taste. Uh, and um, the uh, before refrigeration, salting foods was a way to, to preserve it, uh, salted meats, salted fish, pickled vegetables, um, which still is used in many parts of the world. Um, salt is also a taste, and salt is also a physiological uh, need. So I don't think zero salt in anybody's diet would, would probably be appropriate, so some level of salt is needed. But some societies, such as societies in China and Japan and perhaps Southeast Asia and India do have fairly high salt in their food. And I think that's partly a, a taste issue um, and partly because many of these places have only recently got refrigeration. For instance, the majority of homes in India would not have refrigerators. Yes. So salting is a way of preserving food. Right. So there has been, of course, uh, a lot of initiatives, even from governments, to regulate salt intake, uh, uh, particularly as regards to high blood pressure and uh, the consequences such as stroke and myocardial infarction. So what's, uh, what's the evidence currently? How can we look at this? Is it, uh, does it depend on the level of salt you take in or is it, is it a measure that you would support? I think uh, uh, the approach to salt has to be customized to the level of salt intake in a community. Uh, there is no doubt that high salt intakes, say um, over, um, over six or seven grams of salt a day, which is about over four grams of sodium a day, is associated with uh, increased risk of uh, stroke, especially stroke, but also other cardiovascular events. So that would occur, for instance, in Japan, would it? Japan, China, yeah. and also in some communities in the West, some individuals will, yes. will, will consume a lot of salt. And I think high salt intake is bad. Mm -hmm. There's also no doubt that there's a good relationship between salt intake and blood pressure. And there are some nice small studies showing that if you aggressively reduce salt, and these studies are all feeding studies, where you replace the diet for four weeks or five weeks, um, salt, uh, blood pressure comes down. Mm. But really, the point of it all is to prevent cardiovascular events as opposed to lower blood pressure per se. Now here, the data are surprisingly sparse. The available data seem to suggest that there may be an optimal range of, uh, of salt intake and perhaps sodium intake between four and six grams a day may be a optimal level. Above six grams, there appears to be an increased risk of cardiovascular events. So there is a bimodal curve. It's a bimodal curve, it's a J-shaped curve. And below about four grams a day, and certainly below three grams a day of sodium, there seems to be an increase in cardiovascular events. These increases are largely cardiovascular deaths and heart failure. There is no apparent increase in stroke or myocardial infarction, but there's no decrease either. Mm -hmm. Now, these are epidemiological data, and all epidemiological data have their limitations, but they are the best data we have. We don't have any, while well, we have good randomized trials showing that showing a substantial reduction in sodium will reduce blood pressure, mm -hmm. these trials have not been designed to show whether lowering sodium will lower cardiovascular events. So that key part is lacking. So in their absence, the next best thing we have to use is the is the epidemiological data. But there was a very confusing study from, for, at least from, for myself, from Belgium, where they actually showed that if you lower sodium, uh, 
that your blood pressure gets lower, but the event rate actually went into the other direction. Now that was an observational yeah, study, was observational, and there yeah. are seven observational studies that fit that. Mm -hmm. Now that may well be real mm -hmm. because we do know that extreme low, uh, uh, ex extreme reductions in salt do increase cardiovascular events because it activates the renin angiotensin system mm -hmm. and the sympathetic nervous system. Having said that, all epidemiological data are potentially suspect uh, in terms of confounding, but most of these studies did the best possible job anybody could do in controlling confounding. And when you get several studies, now seven studies, showing either an inverse relationship mm -hmm. or a no greater uh, or no lower level of CBD, you start to worry. Sure. Um, and the worry is not that we shouldn't recommend high salt being reduced to moderate salt. I think that's, that is an appropriate strategy to do. But the worry is moderate salt reduction going to low salt, will it actually produce benefits for the population? Because if the epidemiological data are true, either it's useless, which means it's an expensive strategy, or it could well be harmful, which is which is worse. Yeah, so true. I think this is an area that requires careful um, examination. So for our listeners, uh, which countries would be in the moderate range? Uh... Most of Western Europe is in the moderate range, as is the US and Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, now, within that, there are p pockets of people who consume sure. a lot of salt. So my advice to people is minimize added salted food. Right. But okay. in Western countries, the amount of salt that comes from adding salt at the table or in cooking is less than 25% yes. of the salt. It's all in processed food. Mm -hmm. And it does make sense to reduce the consumption of processed food if you can. Sure. Because you, these are also high in fats. Exactly. So that makes sense. The concern I have is the the recommendations by certain groups to legislate very extreme salt reductions. Right. That, if the data supported it, I would be supportive, but at the moment the data are not uh, that clear cut. So one needs to be cautious. So what trials should we perform or design to address this question? Well, the ideal trial is obviously to take people in, in Western countries and randomize them to reducing salt by at least a further two or three grams a day. These are very difficult diet uh, trials to do yeah. because even the short-term trials of blood pressure lowering mm -hmm. replace the entire food, yeah. not only of the subject, but also of the spouse. Yes. And these trials are only five weeks long. Yes. So, tr you know, to get clinical events, you need long-term trials of several years. So the feasibility is really quite... It's questionable. But having said that, it's possible if we target some high-risk people living in facilities, like people living in old age homes, right. where the food is made for them. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, you could randomize uh, either individuals or more practically multiple facilities, right. say, in 100 old age homes, mm -hmm. and you, you randomize them to two levels of salt. Yeah. And that may be one way of looking at it. And the value of looking at the elderly is these are high-risk people, and salt sensitivity increases with age. Mm -hmm. So if it matters, this would be really an ideal group to do That's a study true. in. Mm -hmm. And we've been discussing this with various people. And given how big this is as a policy issue, this is something governments either in, the West, uh, either in North America or in Europe or together should mount these studies. Yeah, they they're should not, support it. Yeah. yeah, they're not impossible to do. Yeah. Now, this is hypertension, and another issue is, of course, heart failure, right. where I myself recommended most patients so far to reduce their salt intake, because I noticed that sometimes they come because of a, of a fondue or, yeah. or a salty a sushi and so on, and then they come to the emergency unit. How is the, 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 the situation there? I mean, like you, I used to recommend uh, salt restriction in uh, individuals with heart failure. Mm -hmm. But recently there have been six randomized trials of salt restriction versus no salt restriction on top of standard therapy, which included diuretics. And all of them showed a doubling in mortality. Now, this is worrisome mm -hmm. because the very group that you, we all thought we should restrict is actually showing harm. Yes. There have been trials in people with, uh, without heart failure 
and they show a trend, but nothing is clear cut. So right now the jury is out. So we should need, uh, do a trial that to do t yeah. a trial, maybe in high risk people who are not heart failure because you need a lot of events, right? Or alternatively, as I said, in the elderly who live in 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 homes because you can control their diet. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, a very controversial issue. Thank you very much for enlightening My us. My pleasure, Tom.